the Model Veterans Treatment Court Act. The average person in the military, and these are good, good people. Something's happened. They're not adjusting to, to what they've been through, or they're using something to cope with the different things that they've done or experienced in the military, then they get in trouble. Um, I happened to get a, a driving under the influence charge in Great Falls, Montana, and I knew at that point in time my life was completely out of control and I needed help and that's where I learned of the Veterans Treatment Court. I have got my son back. It's absolutely saved my life. When we take these humans that are healthy and proud and brave and, and we put them into a situation that profoundly changes human beings. There's over 350,000 veterans in Iraq and Afghanistan who suffer from PTSD. One in five veterans uh, suffers from a uh, traumatic brain injury. One in six suffers from a substance use disorder. And so the veterans that we see coming into our veterans treatment court for the most part, having been involved in the justice system, they've lost their jobs, their homes, their families, and their marriages, and their children. Enacting a veterans treatment court may be the veterans' last and only chance. It literally means saving their lives. Many of the issues that veterans suffer from while they're in service that may have led to a dishonorable discharge are the same issues that they're suffering from when they're back in the community. So. Um, discharge status of the veteran is irrelevant. Doesn't matter if they're honorably discharged or dishonorably discharged. We've tried to be as all-inclusive as possible. Not every veteran who commits a crime is eligible for this program. If they're dangerous and they can't be safely supervised in the community, then prison may be the alternative for them. So it really depends on the individual veteran and the nature of the offense. It also requires the individual and prosecutor and and, and the court to agree that this person should be treated in a veterans court and that they have to abide by the terms. So the Bureau of Justice Statistics reports that if you send someone to prison, there is a 66% recidivism rate. From veterans treatment courts, we know that there's only a 25% recidivism rate. And in my veterans treatment court, I'm proud to report that we have just over a 4% recidivism rate. In the state of Montana, it costs $42,000 a year to send someone to prison. We can put someone through the Veterans Treatment Court program for $4,500. I think it is a compassionate act. It's focusing on trying to, uh, to get those veterans into a position where they can be a part of the society again. And I think probably one of the most important things about the act is to get them accessible to another serviceman, a veteran, somebody they can talk to. Incorporating the families and the victims into the Veterans Treatment Court process is absolutely vital. I have yet, in my experience, to have a victim who objects to a veteran coming into a Veterans Treatment Court. It's really acknowledging that, that we have neglected our veterans for many years. And it's something that we owe, the, owe to them because of what they have given to us. I would just like to say from my heart for all the legislative folks out there that we absolutely need this into law. We have to help these veterans. It's not doing society any good unless we're able to turn these people around and allow them to, to actually be uh, productive citizens of this country. There's 22 veterans a day that commit suicide. And that number is inexcusable. We have these men and women who have put their lives on the line so that we can live in this country and we can have a constitution that provides us with things like a court system that other countries don't have the ability to, to appreciate. And so we truly have a moral obligation to help these veterans in need.